It's estimated that you need around one gram of cholesterol a day. Surprised? Well, despite cholesterol's bad reputation, cholesterol is a must-have chemical. It's a precursor for the synthesis of bile acids as well as steroid hormones and a critical component of cell membranes where it modulates their function. Now, the body can make it from scratch or it can take advantage of the cholesterol that comes in from the diet. To make it from scratch is a mammoth undertaking. It takes 30 steps to go from acetyl coenzyme A to a newly minted cholesterol molecule. 30 steps. So you guessed it. The average liver is only too pleased to get it ready made from dinner. When dinner is low on cholesterol and cholesterol is needed inside the liver to move the fat supplies out, well, the liver must allocate the necessary resources to produce what is needed. You see, cholesterol plays an important role in lipoprotein vehicle construction. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we go behind the scenes of the cholesterol production process to gain insights into how to lower cholesterol levels naturally. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, the enzyme at the start of the cholesterol production line is HMG co-reductase. He's not an especially charismatic enzyme, but he is a hard worker and he is a company man. He takes orders well and will go the extra mile and work overtime if asked to by the management. These qualities have led HMG to be promoted to the Chief of Cholesterol Production. Actually, his official title is the Rate Limiting Enzyme of Cholesterol Production. It sounds quite grand, but he is very much a supervisor, not a manager. He makes production happen, but he has very little control over when production happens. This is controlled by the higher-ups. And they can sometimes be rather demanding, <laughs> even unreasonable. Now, officially, cholesterol production should happen during the day shift. But HMG Coreductase's contractual obligations require him to show up for work when the kitchen opens. Now, in some people, this happens seriously early. In others, well, he gets to lie in until noon. Of course, usually in these people, the kitchen remains open really, really late. Either way, when the kitchen opens, there's a rush of supplies. As insulin sets about making deliveries, HMG gets ready for work. Now, exactly how many HMG co enzymes show up for work on any given day is planned and coordinated by a member of the HR team, commonly referred to as SHREP. When shortages of intracellular cholesterol are detected, SHREP arranges for cholesterol production to be ramped up by increasing production of all the workers, including HMG co -reductase. When supplies are adequate, a skeleton staff is enough to keep things going. This story plays out every time a grocery delivery is made. Now, deliveries can continue late into the night, but when feeding is done for the day and the kitchen has been closed, E3 ligase GP78 signs HMG co-reductase out. Now, if you're imagining HMG co-reductase goes home to the wife and kids, he doesn't. Signing out involves getting ubiquinated by E3 ligase GP78. As a ubiquinated protein, he gets to enter the proteosome. Unfortunately, at the end of the ride, he ends up being vaporized. Aish. I know, I know, it sounds harsh, but this is how life is inside of a cell. And being vaporized in the proteasome facilitates reincarnation as another protein because the amino acids are continuously recycled. With HMG co-reductase gone, 
the cholesterol production line is idle for a few hours. Well, this is how it's meant to work. Feeding induces cholesterol production and fasting represses cholesterol biosynthesis because insulin comes and goes with each feeding occasion. But in the metabolically broken, insulin never knocks off. Insulin is around morning, noon, and night. Now, exactly why insulin levels are permanently high is still a bit of a mystery. What is clear, it's not a completely voluntary state of affairs. Insulin encounters resistance. But through it all, insulin manages to keep smiling and going through the motions. The situation has far-reaching consequences. For one, beta cells, which must keep up insulin production 24-7, take serious strain and often succumb to overwhelm. This culminates in a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. On the cholesterol front, there is no let up in production because GP78 is missing in action. So HMG co-reductase is not signed out and cholesterol production continues all day and all night. Powerful dark forces keep insulin circulating. The result, levels of cholesterol in the circulation are higher than ideal. Scientists are just beginning to unpack all the signaling. What they know so far is GP78 gets instructions from one of the big bosses, mTOR, via a minion known as USP20. And insulin and mTOR are business partners. Since high cholesterol is associated with cardiovascular disease, logic says we should lower cholesterol by any and all means at our disposal. The current go-to approach is to disable HMG co-reductase. This is what statins do. It works. Production is turned down, typically during the day, because statins are often swallowed with breakfast. In some circumstances, this reprieve in production can be most helpful. But since cholesterol production is not a nice to have, but a necessity, this too can have unwanted consequences. It would seem prudent to optimize the timing of your cholesterol production block. Daytime production is normal. Nighttime production is problematic. This is the cholesterol production you want to shut off. You can do it with drugs or you can do it with biology. The biology is clear. HMG co-reductase is the victim. The poor little guy is subject to the whims of an out-of-control insulin. To create better body chemistry, insulin must be reined in, especially at night. Getting this right will cause cholesterol levels to be lower. No idea where to start? Download our Willpower Report. It's free and begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry and better health. Need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Sign up for a health conversation at our website. And whilst you're there, browse our library or enroll in one of our free courses. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who is worried about their cholesterol levels. Share this video with them so they realize what it really takes to turn off excess cholesterol production. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. As a ubiquinated protein, it gets to enter the proteasome. Unfortunately, at the end of the ride, uh, he ends up being vaporized. Aish. I know, I know, it sounds harsh. 
but this is how life is inside of a cell. And being vaporized in the proteasome facilitates reincarnation as another protein because the amino acids are continuously recycled.